Lloyd, you went to $4,000 a share hours ago on Amazon. What do you see within what they said yesterday that gives you persistency of income growth and persistency of profit growth? Yeah, Tom, what was most striking about the quarter last night was the profitability. And if you add back the COVID expenses uh, that were, you know, sort of one time ish, uh, the company actually delivered the, the best segment margins in the retail business they've seen since they provided the segment disclosure. And, you know, it, I think what it does is it tells investors this is a business with massive earnings power at scale. It's always been a question, how much is the underlying profitability? And I think they just answered it with flying colors. So you look out a couple years as the company gets more penetration, more mature, and can run their fulfillment centers at capacity like they did in the last quarter, you can see this business is wildly profitable. Lloyd, you cover Facebook so as well. And I just want to, just to jump in, I find this moment really, really remarkable. A lot of people will come on this program talking about secular tailwinds. Given the amount of fiscal stimulus we had in 2Q, can we say with conviction, and I know it might sound ridiculous, but can we say with conviction that these companies have faced a true cyclical test? You know, you could argue they faced a, a bit of a cyclical test in March, uh, but clearly, you know, the, the amount of stimulus was extremely helpful, and clearly the outlook will depend entirely on stimulus. If, if, if something doesn't come through or it comes through in a disappointing way, it will absolutely show up in these companies' numbers. But you can also see in the broader economy, these guys are gaining all gaining massive share versus their industries, whether it's Amazon, whether it's Facebook or, or Google. I thought it was really interesting with Google, this sort of shift away from advertising, posting the first revenue decline in its history, but increasing its market share when it comes to cloud computing. How much is Google a cloud company? How much is Amazon a cloud company versus uh, plowing into retail or into advertising? Yeah, so for Amazon, I mean, they are the leader, and it is a, it is a cloud company. It's a huge portion of the value we attribute in our $4,000 target price. Um, for Google, they are a, a leading player from a technology perspective. They haven't nailed the go-to-market yet, but they're making a ton of progress. Uh, my own bank just signed a huge deal with them. Um, and I think they'll get there. But in terms of the actual business, it's not yet contributing much to earnings. Uh, it's probably a drag. Uh, so it's it's not at all in the valuation right. for Google. Lloyd Walmsley, I think we've got a real understanding of cash use at Apple, the dynamics of Apple, the debt, the cash buildup, et cetera. And Amazon is much more of a mystery. How does Amazon use its cash quarter to quarter as compared to Apple? Yeah, so what you've seen it a lot in, in the internet side. Companies have been reluctant to use uh, their building cash reserves to, to buy back shares. We're seeing more of that from Google, some of that from Facebook. You know, Amazon has generally uh, been very opportunistic on share repurchase, but largely just using their cash on, okay. on operations. Mm -hmm. okay, well said. Okay, when did they become a blue chip stock? And I mean, is this, this, this ballet in Washington, does that force Mr. Bezos, I mean, the four to one stock split Apple, et cetera, does Jeff Bezos all of a sudden decide to twist Amazon into a more blue chip character? I don't think so. The DNA of the company is is one day. Operate the company like it's the first day. Look around your shoulder uh, and continue to innovate. I, I don't think it's in their DNA to to do anything normal.